All right, in this video, we're gonna do problem number four, which is included on the free ATIT's math practice test that I have over at idomath.weebly.com. Check the links in the description below. So number four, we want to subtract two mixed numbers, and there's two approaches I'm gonna show you in this video. One way, the most common way, is probably to just go ahead and take the five and three fourths. We're subtracting two and one sixth, and we need to get common denominators. Some people will say 12 is the common denominator. That's correct. That's actually the least common denominator. Some of you may multiply six times four and say 24. That's a common denominator. I'm going to use 12 here to keep my numbers from getting too big. They wouldn't get too big with 24 either, but 12 is the least common multiple, and we also call this our least common denominator. You must get common denominators so that you can subtract or add fractions. So how am I getting 12 from four? We're multiplying by three, right? So let's multiply the top number by three. Therefore, three fourths is the same thing as nine twelfths. What are we doing to six to get 12? We're multiplying that by two. So let's make sure we multiply the top number by two. One times two gives us two. Therefore, two twelfths is the same thing as one sixth. Now, this approach that I'm doing here by finding common denominators is the best approach for this particular example because now we can quickly subtract these two fractions, nine twelfths minus two twelfths is seven twelfths. We did not have to borrow. If you had to borrow in this example, it would be a little bit more difficult with this approach that I'm taking here. Five minus two gives us three. So therefore our answer, our difference is going to be three and seven twelfths. The second approach to subtracting mixed numbers is to convert these to improper fractions first. Some of you may be thinking this is a waste of time, but this would be a good approach if you had to end up borrowing down here. Therefore, five and three fourths, we take the four times the five, that gives us 20, plus three, we get 23 over four. So 23 over four, and we want to subtract, six times two is 12, 12 plus one is 13. So we're subtracting 13 over six. Well, let's take that same approach of getting a common denominator. Recall that we multiplied by three to get a common denominator of 12 back here. Just make sure you multiply 23 by three. This will give you 69. Multiplying the six by two gave us that common denominator of 12. 13 times two will give us 26. Now we can subtract these two improper fractions. So 69 minus 26, that will give you 43 over 12. This is the improper fraction of this mixed number. Let me show you how to get three and seven twelfths from this. 43 over 12 really means 43 divided by 12. How I think about it is inside divided by outside, inside divided by outside. 12 will go into 43 three times. It will not go into it four times. Three times 12 is 36. Subtract, we get a remainder of seven. And look at how this is set up. 12 goes into 43 three times. We have a remainder of seven, and then we were dividing by 12. Three and seven twelfths. That's how you can convert an improper fraction to a mixed number. Again, this technique here, you may think this is overkill, but I promise you, if you ever run across a problem where you have to borrow, we didn't have to borrow here. We could take nine minus two, but had this been nine minus 10 twelfths or nine minus 11 twelfths, that can get a little bit trickier. It is still doable this way, but some people will take this approach as well. Again, I'll cover that. Feel free to make a request over at my website or probably before too long, I'll make a video addressing that anyway. And that's it for this video. I hope it helped.